October 27th, 7.30 p.m. It's things are uh, just getting even wilder, wilder, wilder by the day. Just, uh, uh, I want to start out with Walter Veith here, uh, explaining really clearly why what, the, what Pope Francis is, is completely heretical doctrine and it's pantheism. It's where earth worship. It's what it's but uh, Spinoza. It, it's not Christianity. That's by any stretch of the imagination. So here's Weiss speaking forth. And now let's see what the common good must entail for our time in which we live. Laudato Si. You all know it. We all know it. Praise be to you, my Lord. In the words of this beautiful canticle, St. Francis of Assisi reminds us that our common home is like a sister with whom we share our life and a beautiful mother who opens her arms to embrace us. Praise be to you, my Lord, through our sister, Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us. What is that? What is that that is... Ah, uh, it gets worse. International negotiations cannot make significant progress due to the positions taken by countries which place their national interests above the global common good. Here we go. This is Laudato Si. This is not some strange document. Now let's read this one. Sacramental signs and the celebration of rest. Article 233 in this encyclical. The universe unfolds in God who fills it completely. Hence there is a mystical meaning to be found in a leaf, in a mountain trail, in a dew drop, and in a poor person's face. What is that? That's pantheism. Let's call it panentheism. This is panentheism. Out of the pen of the Pope. We spoke about it this week. This is panentheism, and it is satanic. The ideal is not to pass from the exterior to the interior to discover the action of God in the soul, but also discover God in all things, in case you didn't get it. We serve a personal God. We do not serve this God who defines what the common good is based on the language of Lucifer and not the language of God. I mean, one thing that has to be said is the liberals have everything they want. I mean, they've got the, the presidency, they've got the... Uh, both houses of Congress, they can do anything they want and look what they're doing. Where's our socialized medicine? Where's our prosperous economy? Where are we respected all around the world now? All the things we had to get rid of Donald Trump for so that we could have racial justice. And where are they? They've got everything they want. They should be happy. But instead of they're happy, they're, they're not dancing in the streets. Well, Chuck Schumer is. You can watch him dancing around or Stephen Colbert. They're, they're absolutely giddy to uh, control everything, but I don't hear much joy from the people that voted them into office. They're still angry as hell. They still want to tear everything up. They've already been delivered poverty, not seen since the Great Depression. Nation against nation in Europe and civil war anarchy in America, I think only a nuclear war is going to make them happy. They've, you know, what else, what else is going to make these people happy? They're obviously driving toward the same agenda that the Pope is, world domination. That's the new world order. Who doesn't see this? They've been trying with all their might to bring it about, and if they haven't succeeded so far, that can't be laid at the feet of the fully supportive American people. We can't be sure, though, that once it's been accomplished, we can all lay back with our recreational drugs in recreational vehicles, dancing naked around the Burning Man and seeing all the great art displayed 
on decorated scooters, bicycles, Mardi Gras floats, and some of the greatest inventive Halloween costumes since last Halloween's Halloween costumes. I see them marching around today already. It's the 27th and the next town over, they're all, I, I don't know why they're out on the 27th. Get as much candy as you can. And incidentally, that's Satan's big night. That's when all the children are sacrificed. That's a pagan ritual, but not to the Christians. I mean, anytime you can go out and celebrate and have big meals and, and buy lots of crap, then it's a Christian holiday. What's Christmas? 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 What's that all about? Is that a day for God? No, it's a day to get as many presents as you possibly can. We believe in Saint Nick. We believe in jolly old Saint Santa Claus. You know, there's, he's a loving God. He doesn't punish. He doesn't, he's not going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. That was somebody else. That must have been the devil, because the devil does stuff like that. It's, it's like a childish version of uh, God. Oh, he's in the trees and he's in the flower. It was in the, the poor people that we're so concerned about. You always see, you know, go to any uh, impoverished community and all you'll see is Christians walking around trying to help them. So and this is beyond, it's like uber hypocrisy. It, it's mega hypocrisy on, on all sides. I, I'm a hypocrite like everybody else, but I mean, I, it's uh, it's under a, uh, some kind of control. Man, oh man. At least when we're invaded by Chinese and Russian troops, they'll know where to head for great entertainment. Entertainment like this hasn't been on offer since the Nazis marched into Paris back in 1940 without the Par Parisians firing a shot. It took the German forces all of 13 days from the start of the invasion to their unopposed entry into Paris. And today, as irony piles atop irony, we find France having declared war on Germany. Not long after having declared war on America. So far, this is a bitter economic war, but it should be kept in mind that this is where all wars start before they move to the next inevitable stage. As the Prussian general and military theorist Karl van Clausewitz wrote, war is simply the continuation of political intercourse with the addition of other means. At the moment, political intercourse has all but ceased between France and the German-American alliance. An Indian news agency reports, France goes all out against Germany. Macron's blood is boiling because of Germany blindly following directives by the White House to unconditionally support the corrupt government of Voldemort Zelensky, whatever his first name is, Vladimir Voldemort. He is Voldemort, according to our State Department as of yesterday. He's a corrupt dictator. I haven't heard anything today. Maybe he's maybe he's not anymore. You know, by but two days from now they'll forget the the Ned pencil neck geek, uh, whoever she is. I don't know. I mean, you couldn't have a more you know, formidable Pentagon and Federal Reserve than this kind of, oh, what are we going to do next? I don't know. Why don't you go and Ned talk to him, Ned, Ned, or Blinken? Who's taking any of the, or, or, or put Joe Biden up there. Yeah, I have him face down the Saudis or, and have him face down Putin. Why don't you send him to China to have him face down the Chinese communists with reading his ice cream cone? Man, what? Or, or Fetterman. I think Fetterman. Has anybody seen uh, Fetterman lately? Where Where is he? Is he back, you know, getting tested for, for to have his doctors tell him that he's ready to serve and there's no problem? Just like Joe Biden, who will not, who refuses to take a cognitive, a cognition test, you know, recommended by the Republican. Oh, because it was a Republican. But it just so happens that he's the president, he's the scientist who's given the job of testing the cognitive abilities of older geriatric people that show sign, real signs that they have Alzheimer's and shouldn't be holding office. In any sane country, he would have been pulled 
before he was elected. But no, we'll elect him. We'll elect a brain dead person. We know he's brain dead. He's just wandering around here and there with Joe. Oh, come here this way, Joe. This way, Joe. But it's a it's funny. It's it's really a joke. He's sending millions of people to their death, incidentally, Mr. Funny Man. Not that anybody's noticing, particularly in the Liberal Party, who who will back genocide and always have, haven't they? Wasn't it the New York papers that, that backed the genocide of the Native American Indians? Why don't we go back a little way in history as to, to uh, who backed the Vietnam War, for example? Wasn't that a genocidal war, according to the left? I mean, it was just carpet bombing uh, peasants who, had no, who didn't even have weapons much less any kind of anti-aircraft, any way to defend themselves, any more than uh, the Haitians who we just invaded a couple days ago. Now, I, don't, I haven't heard any mention of that. It's hard to keep up with all the countries we're invading. We've just uh, threatened Saudi Arabia with regime change tacitly, which the U.S. government always does. They, they're being told that there's a October 29th terrorist attack coming your way. Gee, I wonder how they know about that. And they've said the same to South Africa. Why are they threatening Saudi Arabia? Well, guess why? Because uh, we're Saudis aren't doing what, what the U.S. says they have to do. Why are they threatening South Africa? The same reason. Because the South African government said this uh, Russian oligarch is perfectly welcome to violate your sanctions and be in our ports. Why? Because the U.S. doesn't have unilateral ability to dict. They're not a world dictator. There have to be U.N. sanctions. The U.S. can't just declare sanctions on the... Sure, they can press gang uh, Germany or whoever they want to into obeying, uh, and that's what we have going. That's why we're in this mess. I'm just talking Henry Kissinger for your real politique. I'm trying to find my, my place. The Minsk Accords, okay? The Minsk Accords, I don't know if, who is aware of the Minsk Accords, which Macron helped broker bringing peace to Europe by ending Ukraine's unprovoked war against the Crimea were violated by U.S. NATO pushing Ukraine to restart the war against Russia. So you have to look back to the history of that war. You can't just come in t uh, two years ago and say, oh, this is the same thing with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's always, there's nothing preceding the Palestinians uh, lobbing their missiles, their improvised devices into Jerusalem, like, like they just did that out of an, un, it was an unprovoked assault and they're invading Israel. The, the way the press reports things is, is just uh, without any context and without any history and because Americans don't want to go to the trouble of reading a book and finding out what the history of the region is, they believe whatever the press says. It's easy to hate people. And that's what we have going. It's, it's, it's global hatred. Germany has been complicit throughout this new aggression toward Russia by sending millions in military equipment, ammo, and supplies. The motive is what the motive always is. Enrichment of the corporate investors and in all of this equipment, along with Germany's manufacturing industry collapsing as a result which I'll describe later, and the value of their currency and all EU currency plummeting as inflation heads into the stratosphere. The German people are demanding their government resign in huge protests and demonstrations. Recently, a right-wing MP was beaten half to death in an assassination attempt in Germany. So you have the same old hate between the, the right and the left, the communists, the, you know, the liberals is a meaningless word. You, you, you have radical socialist, communist government. Everybody was expect. Oh, the media. I don't know. I don't know who was expecting a 
that Joe Biden was supposed to be the unifier who was going to come back to the middle instead of going on and on with this mega Trump and, and these people are fascists and Trump is a, a fascist. And no, a fascist is who's a dictator. You know what a dictator is? A dictator is Joe Biden because a dictator is somebody that unilaterally sitting behind his desk declares war in another country, sends troops, and nobody knows he's done it. He hasn't even passed a re gotten a resolution passed in Congress. He isn't even telling as far as I know. Did, did anybody in Congress know that at the beginning of the war he had troops and advisors and saboteurs and everything else declaring war? That's, de that's a declaration of war when you attack the infrastructure of another country and, and uh, or advising and targeting uh, another country with some, uh, some proxy military. Just like in Vietnam, that's what we started out with. We started out with military advisors. And who was that? Gee, let me think. Oh, yeah, that was the Democrats, wasn't it? That was another Catholic. Jesuits are, are all, all over the place. Man, that's who the, the Pope is at the moment. He's a Jesuit as well. That isn't Christianity. Jesus wasn't a warrior. He wasn't. He was a warrior, a spiritual warrior. You put on your spiritual armor. You don't get your nuclear warheads armed and head off with in your nuclear submarine. That's world domination. That's the Roman Empire. So Christians have got a little bit confused about who they're following. They're following Caesar. Most of them, not all of them. It's a generalized statement about Christianity today. It's not a condemnation of everybody. It's a condemnation of the behavior. And anybody, any time they feel like it, are, are free to repent and get out of Babylon and stop the hate and stop the rage and stop the anger and start the, the Christopher Hedges days of destruction, days of rage. There's a non-Christian for you. <clears throat> Riots are also continuing and intensifying in France, where, as usual, after electing Macron, the citizens who elected him immediately go into the streets and riot for his removal. That's the French Revolution. It never stops, you know, that's, and that's who we take after, off with their heads. Guillotine them. There's even the magazine, the Jacobin. The Jacobins were the ones who, was, you know, that was the first time monarchs had, had been slaughtered. And then the Bolsheviks got the idea from that and slaughtered the Romanovs. These are murderers. You know, murder is murder. A royal family, what do they have to do with anything? You know, they're, fig, they're figureheads. Put them in jail, send them off to, to Patmos, or, you know, send them off to an, an island like Napoleon got sent off to uh, Corsica, or, or where did he go? To Malta? That he came from Corsica. So, so he's, he's sent off to St. Helena. Finally, my, my historical brain clicks into gear. It's pretty rusty. So, and then what does he do? He plots his return. Well, that's satanic, you know. Notice that about, you ever seen his portrait, the hand in here? That's the Freemason. He, he, watch it, you know, watch for it. Watch for the symbols, you can pick them up. I'll give you the guidelines every once in a while. No, no, no. This indicates, wait, 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 wait. The White House directed Germany to stop purchasing Russian gas, which Germany complied with. After that, the U.S., after a couple, you know, Victoria Newland and, and Joe Biden both swore that they would blow up the Nord Stream pipelines, and then mysteriously they blew up. So they allegedly, of course, blew up the pipeline, supplying all of Western Europe. The U.S. Secretary of State afterwards declared that this was a tremendous opportunity to sell <clears throat> the Europe more expensive American, American liquid natural gas due to Germany complying with U.S. orders to destroy and eliminate its own supply of cheap natural gas from Russia. It crippled its own manufacturing capability. France in particular is dependent on the chemicals and parts manufactured 
at the massive BASF facility. Macron has postponed meeting with his German counterpart, Olaf Scholz, amid, quote, fury, unquote, over Germany's energy aid scheme. The aid scheme is a 200 billion EU uh, German domestic energy aid scheme made with the U.S. without consulting its closest partner, France. It favors U.S. and foreign weaponry over EU military defense needs. Germany has already almost depleted its own supply of ammunition. This indicates that Germany from the outset knew full well that Russia had no plan of invading Western Europe, nor did any other rational European aware of Russian history and the Minsk Accords. In the first place, why would Putin invade the very countries who are his next door trading partners and source of revenue for his natural gas supply? As he, as well as everything else, the, the, all the sanctions put on him that, that didn't cripple his economy because he's so adroit. They, he created his own credit system. I mean, the Russians are, are just miles ahead of us in terms of their technical ability, us meaning the West. Look at how handily they've won the without even wanting to fight a war. They've won it. We defeated ourselves. We collapsed all of Europe. Make wow, what I mean, just pay attention. Somebody. I'm just going crazy. That, that's all this is just nobody understands what I'm saying. Is, is that it? any questions? I mean I'll be happy to answer them. Secondly, why would Putin blow up his own nuclear reactor? They were bombing the biggest nuclear reactor in Europe, in the Crimea, Russians' nuclear reactor, just like they had the initial offense against Crimea that were settled by Macron and others with the Minsk Accords. And so the, the American people, or the West in general, I think, just believe anything. Why in the world? It's, it's like, oh, we're at war with uh, Canada, let's say. So what are we going to do? Oh, why don't we bomb our own nuclear reactor? That yeah, that that's what we would do. Oh no, but Putin did it. But he's crazy. He does. You know, crazy people do things like that. I I believe that we. You know, yeah, and Putin wouldn't do it. But I think these people will do it. Just like uh, you know, I can mention other thing, other what I consider false flag events like these big towers. You know. Anyway, there's also, you know, a lot of speculation about FDR being aware of the attack on Pearl Harbor. I don't know if I go that far, but after other things that have happened subsequently, uh, I really don't know. Because, see, it's not that we do it. There are proxies put in motion that do these things that are, you know, agent provocateurs and FBI infiltrated them into the Black Panthers. They infiltrate them into Earth first. So we, meaning the government, the CIA, the FBI, how did all these people get assassinated all, all over the, the world if it wasn't the CIA? I don't know. Somebody should read a history of the CIA. It's really some interesting reading. You'll, you'll find or, or Confessions of an Economic Hitman by John Perkins. I'd recommend a couple of those things. The far left is really good at... at seeing how corrupt uh, the capitalist class is, it, unless they're running it, like the Clintons and the Gores and the uh, Obamas. And the Obama, as he was called by the, the far left and the left until, you know, he was running the country for eight years. And then, then he's the first great noble socialist uh, black president giving us uh, free health care. And being it being sold by all the, the MSNBCs and the NPRs and the the, the the liberal left day in and day out, and it's still being sold, and it's a big lie. So I'm disputing these people as being pathological criminal liars, day in and day out, and you can see the lies if you just go back 10 years or 15 or 20 years and read the news then when 
you know, Saddam Hussein had nuclear weapons and biological weapons. And, you know, if we didn't knock him out right away, then London was going to be uh, hit by a nuclear bomb. Yeah, that's what Saddam Hussein was going to do. He was waiting, you know. And if we hadn't invaded him, there would be no more London because that's what crazy dictators do. They sit down and say, gee, I think I'll, I'll drop a nuclear bomb on London. Yeah, why don't we do that? Why do you want to do it? So, oh, I'm evil. That's, that's what I'm evil. You know, I'm so evil. I, I'm going to, you know, and then what do we do after that? I don't know, let's bomb, the, let's have, we've also got one, let's send them against the U.S. But if you read enough comic books and you watch enough Hollywood movies, then it all makes sense. That That's really what it comes down to. And if you're in the third grade and you have like a really low IQ in the third grade, then, uh, or you take enough drugs, that's another, or you have Alzheimer's. Or all you do is watch TV and believe whatever the government, whoever they are, tell you. That Americans both believe and continue to believe the preposterous fairy tales spun by the Western media that even a minimal application of common sense disproves shows exactly how lost in media-generated psychosis most Americans are. Given the historical animosity between France and Germany, and noting that Germany, having invaded France in World War II, it is easy to see that this is a tinderbox waiting to be ignited. Much as the false story about Russia detonating a nuclear radiating bomb in Ukraine, again, why in the world would Russia detonate a nuclear bomb that is going to affect their own country just as much as it is Ukraine, and that they have no need to use this. They can defeat Ukraine with one hand tied behind their back without using nuclear weapons, just like they're doing now. I mean, they took out their whole energy grid and command, and most of the cream of Ukraine's army are all dead and all the sophisticated weaponry, all the millions and millions of dollars of weapons given them by Germany, which they used to try to blow up the nuclear reactor in Crimea, they're all gone. So, gee, it's going to be a tough fight for Russia versus what's left of Ukraine. So, oh, we better drop a nuclear bomb or set up a dirty bomb. And let's do it right on our border where all our people, it's like saying, Oh, let's go back to the U.S. invading Canada. So, so what we, we would do is we'd uh, put a dirty bomb uh, uh, in Toronto or near Toronto and then explode it so the radiation takes out half of uh, the upstate New York with radiation poisoning where we're going to have to put our people in hospitals and treat them. Russia is... They aren't insane. I haven't seen any any indication that Russia is insane or Putin is insane. So far, he seems to be pretty uh, capable and his generals even more capable now that he's put one who's uh, uh, bar the barbarian in charge since he finally uh, got, ret got tired of the soft, the kid glove treatment, you know, which was getting him nowhere because we're going to keep on with this ridiculous notion of defeating Russia. Oh, we're going to Ukraine is and 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 who the the a couple of troops from Poland and the U.S. and some, some mercenaries are going to drive on Moscow. Hitler couldn't do it, <laughs> and he he was a little more capable than the Ukrainian army. No offense to the how did how. What, how hard they fought and how uh, misguided the whole leadership was that sent them into battle to die for, for nothing at this point. But they were Nazis too. I mean, there was a Nazi battalion, the Aza. They even had the patches on around, or one of them did, with, uh, with Zelensky, one of his bodyguards. I mean, all you have to do is look with your own eyes Excuse me. 
whoever is listening, I, I offer prayers and, and blessings to. I'm not trying to uh, do anything except wake people up to the times being really short and, and to the falsity of this false panentheist God and Baal system and beast system and how the times are really urgent now because every day we move closer and closer to this uh, war, global war, that is inevitable. I don't know where the, the in the world, we aren't following the BASF factory in Germany being packed up and sent to China. Manufacturing is collapsing and that's why Macron is furious because Germany has destroyed the EU. It's, gonna, it's throwing in its lot with America. So that would put Macron, I mean, let me just think for a minute, that would put Macron and Russia as having and China and having mutual interests to it's it's a shifting global uh, j just like the Second World War. I mean, Russia and Germany were allies. They had a non Soviet Nazi Soviet non aggression pact. So for the first couple of years of the war until. Hitler had thought he had finished off Britain. Hitler's big mistake was turning, pivoting away from Britain before they were. He could have finished London off with without a problem. As Luftwaffe had total air superiority, and they were knocking the the heroic fighters they off out of the skies. But then he he pivoted, and on top of that, he didn't drive on Moscow. We fiddled around all over until the winter drove, and he was fifteen kilometers or miles, I never know what measurement they're using. He was just, just short of Moscow when, when the winter set, and then they all froze it up, just like Napoleon's. Uh, it's so fascinating how history repeats itself literally, but with different countries. I mean, once it's Germany, and then it's France, and now France and Germany have reversed order because Germany is collapsing. I mean, they... Their economy is collapsing. They're, they're shipping manufacturing. They've sold out their working class because the German workers have, you know, get paid too much money. So there goes the manufacturing, just like the U.S. did to its workers, offshoring their, the manufacturing to a cheap labor market. So it's all going to China. And what else is in China is cheap natural gas that they're getting from Russia that Germany had until America told them to shut off the tap with sanctions and, and on top of that getting knocking out the gas supply anyway so uh, there's nothing rational at all except the rationality of the new world disorder the brave new world order of neural implants and transhumanism and artificial intelligence and a digital uh, nightmare that's coming with whether anybody likes it or not. I certainly, I, I certainly don't like it. And I just go on and on with the same proposition, which is to turn it off, you know, to, to disengage from it. The more the truism being that the closer you are to God, the further away you are from your technology and vice versa. The more technology you're uh, entranced by, that's the devil. That's temptation. It, what does technology offer except a million and one temptations to succumb to? Entertainment tonight, entertainment round the clock. And it's an, it's an escape mechanism. I've had a number of people tell me, oh, that no wonder the kids are escaping, you know, because the world's so horrible. The world is not, not horrible. You're horrible to say that. The world is not horrible. The world is, is what it always has been. The world is 
filled with danger and it's filled with the satanic and it's filled with temptation, but it's a beautiful world. I mean, we're the ones destroying it, but it doesn't mean that uh, there isn't food and there isn't sunlight and there isn't uh, what's what what we are haven't yet destroyed. But the uh, person to be praised and the person to thank every day and the person to pray to and who has done it all is is Jesus and, and God Almighty. And everything else is navel gazing and self being, you know, being self self worshiping, self uh, feeling omnipotent, thinking that you're God. That's what pantheism is, and that's what this this lousy pope. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. That is not a a uh, godly person. I can just see who he is without even knowing. Looks like Vladimir Lenin, really. There's something about the the. Let me see if I can find a picture of Lenin. No, I won't won't indulge myself. But worshiping a fertility goddess in the Vatican, come on, when is anybody going to wake up to the fact? Not even the, the, it's almost, it's as if he could do anything heretical and he'll still be followed. He's a, he's a communist. Liberation theology is communism. It was the liberation theologist, leftist, Catholics is the, the background of the Argentinian communist. And so we have a, a communist system that doesn't work. It just involves millions and millions of people dying. It's not that, that capitalism is working well either, but there is a, a doctrinal aspect of communism, which is that uh, God doesn't exist, and to get rid of the churches and get rid of the traditional family. That's part of uh, Marxist doctrine, is to destroy, just like the BLM manifesto, is destroy the traditional family. That's why the Bolshevik, yeah, the women are equal and the men are equal, and, you know, the state will raise the indoctrinate, not raise, indoctrinate the children just into radical Islam or, or into a lot of Christianity is the same. It's this kind of indoctrination where you're loyal to the clan, you're loyal to the the cult. You're not, you don't have a relationship with God, you have a relationship to the cult leader, whether that's the priest or the pastor or the pope or the the Jim Joneses or the D David Koresh's or the Brigham Young, who was a 33 degree Freemason, incidentally. There's no coincidence with who these uh, 33 degree Masons are that you'll see in the in Temple of Freemasonry in Washington, D.C., or you can look up on in Wikipedia, or you can find them on the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And you can see your Aleister Crowley there, and you can see your uh, Karl Marx there, and you can see your Hindu gods and everything else there, your Freemasons from the Hollywood there. They're not there coincidentally. Nothing is coincidence. So many people say that it, things are random and things just are, you know, man was a creation of a lot of random things. And, you know, there's no order. There's no meaning. And it, you know, I see meaning every time I get up and put all this, start putting all this stuff together, and I don't see anything random about it. I don't see anything random about what the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bankers or Klaus Schwab, there's nothing random about what they're doing. The results are, are, are you know, exactly what they want the results to be. So, God bless. I'm, I'm signing off now at 39 minutes tired of uh, uh, talking. I have to go back to prayer now. <laughs>